humanitarian live with Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Asil. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Yes, it's great to be here. And we will be talking today about the topic of safety. The topic that I think many of us don't really like consciously think about, but we may often think about it when we're in danger or at risk or we are about to make decisions, right? Then these moments, this feeling may come up, but otherwise we don't really like think about it and go and do and live our lives. So I really wanted to discuss the topic of safety also from our personal perspectives, but also giving you ideas of how you could be creating safety where you wanted to if you think this is what's stopping you from transitioning from going for your dreams because you're feeling like you're lacking courage or you're lacking uh some other like commitments because you don't feel safe and this is the topic that we want to talk about so let's start with the usual question of like defining and and maybe also talking a little bit about why we need to like bring to our awareness this topic of safety what would you say yeah. yeah you know it's a big topic it's a there is a there is a lot to unpack here potentially but um from my perspective if you look at safety our personal safety i think there are two things so we can talk about the physical safety and we can talk about the emotional or psychological safety and well let's stick with emotional and and i think that's the space where we always can come back whether it's physical or in emotional where we where we are the most creative where we can explore we can do things um that allows us really to to be to our to live to our fullest potential um and if we're going out of this 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 feeling of safety then then you know we start being uh, maybe uncomfortable we start really questioning and and so i think um here one of the also this this space of safety allows us to be happiness and to be super creative so what i would say one of the most important elements here at least from my perspective at this moment is really to know what is it that gives us safety and and it could be so different to so many different people and i think we we may often assume that you know what what keeps keeps me safe keeps you safe but uh gives you a feeling of safety but it's not at all mm -hmm. and there are some of the and if you ask people it could be so varied for some people it's physical a physical location for some people it's a mental space like i'm in this mental space that i i feel safe and that's good for me um, for some people, it's just an uh, uh, emotional feeling. So it's really, for some people, very often it's attached to a certain financial situation yeah. or it can be attached to, you know, I feel, I only, I, I, I remember hearing people, I only feel safe when I have this monthly income and it doesn't yeah. matter how much I have, but I just really need this. So it's so varied. What about you, Asel? What, what, what is safety for you? So I was thinking the same, like I was reflecting on my own personal journey of safety. And what I have realized more and more is that absolutely this is a feeling, right, that we feel so that we can continue functioning in the way we want to, or we can even go to dare to do things that we have never done before, especially like in transitioning, this is what we do. We go to the unknown. We're scared, but we also know that this is what we want. So obviously there are like safety we're creating whether we're aware of it or not and then we're going and daring to do things so i have found for myself for my own journey is that i used to be someone who relied on external safety a lot like mm -hmm. i don't know having a mm -hmm. uh, an apartment having a contract mm -hmm. having a salary right or having a status having a privilege whatever it is mm -hmm. I used to think of them being like the main sources of how I feel good about myself, how I feel like I am achieving things in life and all of the things yeah. or how successful I am. Right. So whatever the things that come out after feeling safe. And then I also realized the downside of that. And this is obviously my personal experience. So that's why I wanted to share it for anyone who could benefit from it. And the downside that I see is that whenever I'm attaching to that and using my contract as a reason why I am safe, right? So I am safe only if I have this contract and I can't be safe if I don't have it, then what I 
observe myself do is like clinging on to that contract so mm-hmm. much and not really daring to do other things I wanted to or doing things in the way I wanted to because I was afraid to lose the contract or I was afraid that someone wouldn't extend it, right? So then I would start compromising things and not really being like true to my principles or being true to my integrity. So this is what I have observed, the downside of like so much attachment to contract making me feel safe. And then I realized, okay, if I remove all of those external factors, and I have gone very radical as well. So I think Vicky knows this as well, that I have no insurance of whatsoever. Um, I have gone to war zones and survived and all the things without anything, right? Obviously, this might be sounding very reckless for many people, so I totally get it. But what I really want to offer from my own experience is that I have never felt unsafe because of lack of insurance or because of lack of contract, right? Which makes me conclude, at least for myself, that safety does not come from those external things, even though it can and we may feel comfort in it, we may feel secure in it, and it's like a very human thing to do. And I'm not like saying that don't do it. I'm just saying that consider that option that you can have that You can use those external things as reasons why you feel safe, but you can also rely on more reliable source, which is your inner like mind that gives you that safety, meaning your thoughts, your beliefs about what you're capable of, what you can do in life. All of these things can give you the safety that you may not be able to find in other things. What then happens is that once you know that, then this like frees you to then decide if I can create my safety in the way I want to, then I don't need to depend on my contract to be creating whatever I want to, right? Excuse me. Or I, I can decide to do something else or I can go find somewhere else or whatever the thing that we want to do next is going to be so much easier than we believe that this is the it. this is the only thing that will like make me happy or make me provide for my life or whatever it is but if we remove that attachment then it becomes like well I could create whatever I want in whatever I want to and therefore we like we take this freedom and then the courage and all the other feelings come up and then we can do many things even though, of course, we will be afraid to be doing it, but still, we will always know how to create that safety. So this is the only perspective I wanted to give to everyone, is that if you're really looking for ways to not depend on work that you don't want to or other things or other objects, then you have a choice also to say, you can be happy without them or you can be happy with them, right? So it's really up to us how to uh use it mm-hmm. okay so this is what i wanted to share in terms of like why it's necessary to talk about the safety and what it is so maybe vicky we could talk about more as to how we recognize like when we feel safe or what are the clues that maybe we could give people to understand that okay this is when i'm feeling safe i mean from our own experiences from our clients mm-hmm. what would you say you know, as I said, it's it's um it's very individual for for every person, and it it can be you know the 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 limits of one's safety is is, is very very different for everyone. Um, but what I would like to say is that here, what is important is to know oneself, is to know uh, the limits until when I feel safe and when is it that I do not feel safe. And I think, as you mentioned um, here, the importance is to know this and to know have the option of redefining it because the feeling of safety is usually um is 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 created relatively early in our childhood depending on on what has happened and you know what we are seeing and experiencing so really to have the ability to so to speak change the narrative this is this is what the safety is until uh, for me um so so what is it what is it that i would like to create here what is it what kind of safety do i want to create for myself so as you're saying i find it very you know being dependent on external of something external 
is extremely limiting for ourselves. It's, yeah. a, it's an option, but it's very limiting. So how can I change it in a way that I have in myself the tools and the belief in myself that that creates the feeling of safety within myself yeah. so i think this these are some of the very important um you know elements um uh, to consider um in terms of really um how to recognize it i think you just know you you, you have the feeling you, it's not necessarily a, a, a very conscious it is a conscious process a little later, but first it's the emotions that strike and, and start, you know, going in all sorts of directions and you start maybe being anxious or, or not knowing what's going on and start actually maybe not even saying phrases or, or, or sentences like I don't feel safe, but something yeah. is happening and sometimes we are not even recognizing what it really is. It's only later that we realize that actually this was like, I didn't feel safe, so I needed to leave. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we just say, you know, I just felt I had to leave. I couldn't stay there. And only yeah. maybe later we realize it's just uh, it was because I didn't feel safe emotionally. I didn't feel physically safe. Um, what is your experience uh, Asseline, with this? Yes, I totally get what you're saying. And I think also like it's intuitively or unconsciously, I think we know it. Right. And and thanks to evolution, we have like lots of tools that detect when we're not safe. So that's why usually what we tend to do is we tend to avoid things or situations, right? Or we tend to freeze or we tend to not to respond. So we tend to minimize the movement so that um, if we don't feel safe. So therefore the opposite is true when we feel safe is we then like start daring things, start exploring things, start getting curious about things. And these are all usually the feelings that we tend to like recognize within ourselves, uh, even if not maybe consciously, but we know that this is time we can do it. Like one of the examples that comes to my mind is when going for driving first, right? When we, you go driving, like you will have so much fear. Uh, typically, this is my experience. Um, and then, <laughs> and then once, but then you also have this other feeling of like, but I can do it, right? Like maybe it's not conscious, but you still want to go and do it. It's like a drive kind of, it drives you like go and do it anyway, even if you're so scared to death, right? So you can see that those can coexist where yeah. we are feeling so much fear, but at the same time we're going and doing it. So this can be like yeah. the example of when we're not even like consciously telling ourselves the mantra of uh, I can do this or whatever, we're just like, intuitively or unconsciously unaware but still going and doing things um, because we know that other people are doing it or because we know that this is like a constrained environment right so it's not like we are going on a highway on the first day so there are like certain limits so therefore we know that we can trust it we can go for it so you can always um, uh, recognize it uh, like we was saying in your body and then what I would love to offer you as well is that I think oftentimes what happens is that we tend to play safe is as well. Like we mm -hmm. tend, like we talk about this sometimes, right? We say, we yes, say we didn't really go. Yeah. Like uh, some of the examples that come to my mind is like, we are so excited about this contract or about this job opportunity, like in a very dangerous area because we really want to go and explore, but then um at the same time we're like telling ourselves no we can't do that because it's too risky or whatever it is mm -hmm. and in those moments we may be often also telling ourselves that well but you should have gone anyway you got scared um you played mm -hmm. safe you shouldn't have played safe right so these kind of things we tend to then tell ourselves as well so be careful when you are doing that because i really want to believe that our brains are so good at protecting us that it yeah. like automatically does not allow us to go to places if we don't feel safe. Yeah. And that's amazing yeah. ability our brains have. And I think trusting that is always better and safe rather than like risking, right? Even if we know that like organizations create certain safety around it as much as possible, even if that, but if we inherently are believing we're not safe, then why risk it why go for it so that's why and the other element i think i want to mention here is 
but there might be also other areas where we're playing safe even though we didn't need to right mm -hmm. and this yeah. is also something to explore because i have noticed from my own experience that i would play safe whenever when when i didn't want to believe what i can do and i didn't want to believe my capacity what i'm capable of right when i would always undermine myself or say that well only other people with x amount of experience can do it i can't mm -hmm. because right and then i will explain it away why i can't and then that i think may be the playing safe not in a healthy way because you are a priori undermining yourself your abilities and then you are not basically trusting yourself right um and that is something that i would love to suggest to avoid it because in the long run we will not be happy with that because in the long run we'll be telling ourselves well i could have done it or we will be telling ourselves um you missed the opportunity or uh, like we just mm -hmm. compile not trusting ourselves more and that's not useful at all so this is something to be mentioned anything yeah i feel you're mentioning a lot of lot of uh important things you know like playing safe and also um what has been coming to my mind is really um people play safe that you know the evolution wants our survival right and that there are smarter books smart books about that it doesn't necessarily want our happiness so it is up to us to really to create our happiness so that's why we have such strong maybe um i would I say reactions when we are going out of our comfort zone when we are going in space that is oh, oh it's not safe any longer or we feel that it's not safe so what i wanted to mention here is also sometimes we try once and then we say okay we tried and that's it and then it, that didn't work I, it was felt horrible but sometimes you know we need to try a few times we need to try like one step and two steps and three steps because it's really it's also a, a trial um a bit of we we need to do this exercise in order to to do to go full maybe full full in a full-fledged way so i would say maybe just try several times and you don't have to go the full I don't know, full spectrum into the area where you don't feel safe and you stay there for a very long time. But maybe you just try a bit, little bit and see how it feels. Because as you say, if we only play it safe and if we're only trying to all the time stay in this situation of being safe, we by default, we will not advance. And by default, the world is a permanent change. So staying safe in this one area will make us obsolete will make us really uh, sort of out of fashion or out of uh, you know just behind everything and um, so but naturally this is somehow important but you know you can pace yourself the rhythm is yours um you can go and back it, it doesn't mean that once you, you you go out there that you have to stay there all the time you can go back and forth so so i think there are different ways different options different perspectives and i think it's very good to know that all these options are available for for everyone to try um yeah. so i would say i wanted to say this that um as you say um a lot of people maybe can be very brave and can feel that i don't need let's say physical safety but that i can deal with physical not feeling safe physically that uh, when you know, eight, eight professionals go to all these if, you know areas in conflict etc but very often we have certain emotional uh, needs and emotionally we would never go uh, outside of certain uh, certain certain limits that we set ourselves mm -hmm. in our minds and in our hearts so i think it's important to question ourselves not only the physical sense of safety but also emotional sense of safety and why am i staying in this so let's say it also concerns relationship and um, why am i staying only in this relationship if it's really not not helping me any anymore it's bringing me down and and etc so no, no, I'm not advocating to leave without thinking or without the really proper processing of this. But what I'm trying to say is that it's important to reassess the, what, what is it that makes me safe um, and, you know, how vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, what, what are the benefits of that, yeah. uh, of, feel, of, of being in the safe space and being outside of the safe space. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that those are a few things that, that are coming to my yeah. mind as I'm thinking about. 
Safety. Amazing. And one and once we're talking about the what to do and how to create safety. So maybe the other things that I could add is that so how you would know that if you're playing safe, right, versus you just want safety, meaning like one is being like playing safe for me sounds like limiting yourself, right? This is essentially mm -hmm. what I mean by it. And feeling safe is genuinely wanting to feel safe so that you can then express mm -hmm. yourself in the way you want to contribute in the way you want to. So how do we really like differentiate between the two is one of the ways that I have found very effective to think about is that uh, in order to find out if I'm genuinely wanting safety or playing safe is I ask myself, so if what so one thing that I ask myself is what is my brain protecting me from, right? Mm -hmm. So like especially when it comes to goals or when it comes to growing or like advancement mm -hmm. in certain things, obviously my brain will be like immediate reaction usually is something like it won't work, uh, you won't be able to do this, uh, like there are millions of people doing it or whatever the things that our brains typically come up and that's I find that that's normal because I just know myself enough to say okay this is like the first wave and then once the first mm -hmm. wave is over right then then I really like get intimate with myself to ask that question of like what is really my brain protecting me from experiencing if I go for it yeah. and my answers usually are like I don't want to be failing right I don't want to be disappointed uh, I don't want to suffer, basically, these are the things. And therefore, my brain is telling me, well, you may as well stay here, right? In other words, my brain is saying, well, it's good to have success or it's good to have those things, but notice you will also be suffering, you will also be disappointed, you will also be failing, and we don't want that, right? So therefore, when that happens, I know that I just want to play safe and I just mm -hmm. want to like my brain's way of saying, let's not go for it, even though it sounds exciting. And in those moments, I really like sitting and understanding with myself that this is what's happening and it's OK. And it's like my brain's job to do it. And but it doesn't mean that I have to follow it. And I think mm -hmm. this is key, right? It's mm -hmm. like like letting your brain the space to bring out all the things of all the things that will go wrong <laughs> and then you saying yeah i understand and i hear you and i respect that this is what we're feeling this is the truth but at the same time i want that other thing and i'm prepared to go through it i'm prepared to do the failing do the disappointment all the things because i know i can handle it right i think this is like for me the biggest safety creating beliefs are I can handle it I know what I'm gonna do or I know how to figure things out I know how to take care of myself right mm -hmm. so these when I think of these things and when I really believe them then I feel like my brain is like a bit releasing and mm -hmm. saying okay let's do that even though mm -hmm. we know all the things that could go wrong but we're still doing it right so this is mm -hmm. I would say how you could go around it and then just being gentle with yourself and exploring what the concerns are and how you will yeah. be dealing with them anyway if you decide to go for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have much to add really at this stage, but just I would say one of the most important things here is really just know what is it that gives you the feeling of safety um on different levels and um to, to start from there i would i would think it's really one of the most important things um an experiment with that how does it feel like being out uh, out of this this comfort zone that uh, that is that is created uh, that creates my safety um and um yeah as you say you know what, what are the tools that i'm going to use right um some i don't know if Sometimes I would ask the question, what's the what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? And I and I think in 90 percent of the cases, the answer is like really nothing. Like maybe the person won't call. Maybe I won't get the job and that's OK. Um, yeah, so, exactly. yeah, exactly. I think I ask that when I am, for instance, like with other people and then my brain is all of a sudden like telling me, oh, no, we can't really say that because 
uh, they may not hear you or they may not understand you or whatever the things, right? There is like this initial filter yeah. with uh, meaning that I'm not feeling safe. And in that moment, I ask myself, like, this is what I really want to ask or this is what I want to say, like yeah. genuinely. And what is the worst thing that can happen? They would laugh at me. They would like react in yeah. the way that would make me feel in a certain way. But I'm okay with that. Yes. Right. Yeah. But also maybe you're not okay with that. So also recognizing that mm -hmm. and, and then deciding what to do. So I always like tell myself I'm okay with that. And I'm okay if other people won't approve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I would like to say it because I want to prove myself for being courageous or being like me in that moment right so that's why like you can see that safety can come up in so many different ways and what i i think what we really want to advocate for is that you can be aware of how you're creating it how you're not creating it uh what makes you feel safe right being aware of those things will always help you like rely on them even if the difficult times come even if transitioning is not going as you wanted to, or even you're planning about it. So yeah. find those poles that help you rely on them while you're doing it so that you don't feel like you're alone or you don't feel like you have no support mm -hmm. system or you always know that you can support yourself, take care of yourself no matter what the outcome is. And that will then comfort you to go for what you're yeah. wanting. Yeah. Amazing. Anything last minute before we wrap up? Um, I felt just really linked to what you're saying is when transitioning, there will be moments where you won't feel safe. Yeah. It's it's if you're wanting something new for yourself, something you haven't done by default, yeah. there will be such moments. So yeah. yeah, um prepare for it and and just do it. <laughs> exactly exactly because i always argue with myself when that happens like when my brain is like well this wouldn't have happened if you were back in the humanitarian world right my brain often okay. says this this wouldn't have happened and then i always tell my brain is like well other challenges would have happened if i stayed yeah, right so it's like it's not really i'm not really suggesting that we like I don't know, uh, go through, sail through life without any problems if we choose one road or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will always have challenges and we will always feel those unsafe mm -hmm. moments of feeling like fear or other things. But it always depends on how we react to that and how we yeah. deal with it or how we take care of ourselves in that process mm -hmm. rather than like telling ourselves, well, in the other, we wouldn't have had it or whatever the thing that we tell ourselves, which is not useful because we did make a decision for a reason. We did transition for a reason. Yeah. So we may as well go and get it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you so okay. much, Vicky. Thank you, everyone, for this. Um, opportunity to share our perspective on safety and if you have any questions uh you want to get coaching let us know and otherwise we'll see you next thursday yeah thank you sl thank you everyone and see you next thursday yes see you bye